Hi, I made a very long video and it's missing. Well, I clicked on upload and it's been sitting here for an hour preparing to upload. I had a wonderful time with Faye and with her daughter Carla this morning. Now I'm going to explain some things to you. Um, Carla had a major stroke. It's a 9 out of 10. So it completely killed half of her brain. One side of her body used to be very, very limp, but now it's it's not hanging, her face is not hanging, it's back up. The brain can repair itself. The brain can create new neural pathways. Just like if you lose your sight, your hearing improves. You lose your hearing, your sight and feel improves. Well, um, I have a feeling that, um, you see, Carla couldn't, she couldn't really talk at all. She's got a few words she can say, but it's hard to remember what they are. It's hard to get them out. I know when I've had a migraine, um, at some point, you know, I see the bright lights, and then I, I go through this phase where I can see a word written but I cannot for the life of me say what that word is. I know the word, I know what it means, know everything about the word, but I cannot make my mouth say that word. Uh, in trying to say that word, the word was cookbook when I was trying to say that word, and the word that came out had not really anything to do with cookbook. It's very... Um, And this very basic word, it was like, um, eat, or something. It had nothing really, it was not a precise word at all. And that's with 100% brain working, but a migraine. Well, a migraine is a mini, 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 tiny stroke. But with Carla's massive stroke, leaving half of her brain dead, she, um, the doctors, of course, said that she would die, but she didn't die. She lived when she came out of the coma, and then um, they thought she would be a vegetable, but she isn't. Her mother has been helping her, you know, helping her to walk and to trying to teach her to talk. She put cards everywhere to label things in the house so that she could say these words. Now, I had a feeling that because our, our body is like a glove, our spirit lives in our body. And so, you know, if you lose your arm, you're not a different person. You're still the same person. If you lose both your arms and both your legs, you're still who you are. Now you have a different way of dealing with the world. Your body is very different. Well, and I thought the same thing might be true for Carla that she has lost the use of half of her brain but she's still the same person inside there and so I did some I had questions and I wondered what does she really know because I was saying are you the same person and she said yes yes um she I don't know if she said yes but it was very um she's very excited to think that somebody she could tell somebody that she was the same person and that she knew everything that she always knew. She could remember things, you know, she of course lost the parts around the, the time of her stroke. That's gone, but memories from before and after are there. But um, I wondered if, if the link between her voice and her brain is broken because of half of the brain being gone now or being dead. And what if there's another way to communicate? And so I took down from the from the refrigerator a magnetic uh, magnetic uh, card, and it had phone numbers. It was a, in case of emergency, and had all these phone numbers. And at the bottom it said after hours, and had another number. And so I showed her the card and said, now if you had an emergency in the middle of the night which number would you use? And she looked the card over and she pointed to 
the local telephone number. There were several towns. She pointed to the local one. I said, no, now wait. Read the whole card, check. So she didn't think she could read. She didn't think she could read at all because she couldn't say things. And because she could never find the word, which was a verbal from brain to mouth. And that's a whole bunch of other um, things. But from brain, from knowing it and to pointing to it, that's only physical. You know, that's just her hand. It doesn't involve creating a sound and and all that that goes with a word. And I said, now, now look it over. Look the whole card over. If in the middle of the night, which card, which, which phone number? And she pointed to the after hours one. So she had to make the association that after hours was the same as the middle of the night and point to it. And she did. And so I was excited. I thought, hey, you know, maybe she's sort of locked in. I mean, not as bad as locked in syndrome where all you can do is blink. But maybe she's locked in. And so I took down from the refrigerator um, the school calendar. And I put it on the table and I said, now, which is your birthday? And she pointed to the month and the date. I said, no, I said, when is Christmas? And she pointed right to the Christmas. I said, when is Halloween? She pointed to Halloween. You know, October 30th. It didn't say Halloween. And, um, or 31st. And, see, I wouldn't have gotten that. And then I asked, what, when is your birthday? And she pointed to that. When's your mom's birthday? When's your children, you know, your son's birthday? And she got them all right. And then, so here she was, you know, nobody knew that she knew these things. Everybody thought they had to teach her everything from scratch. She already knew it all. She just couldn't communicate it. And so I, um, I took down the bottle of jam and I put it in front of her and I said, look at this. Do you know what it says? I mean, don't say it. You know, she was trying to read it. No, no, no. Don't say it. Just look at it. Do you know what it's about? Yes. Do you know what it means? Yes. And then um, there were two containers. And one was strawberry and one was blueberry. And her mother said, which one is blueberry? No, no, she said, is this, is this cherry? And she looked at it, is it um, apple? Is it grape? Yes. And, um, and then, um, is this one? You know, and so we it was then apparent that she knew which was which even though she couldn't say what it was it, how exciting I mean I was just I had chills it was just so exciting and um, so then I said now if you so you can read you just don't know that you can read you understand it you just can't read out loud is what you want to do I said, now, how about, can you follow directions on a bag, like, and she said, and so she went and got a bag of rice out of the refrigerator, and it had the instructions how to do it, and so she opened it up, and she looked at it for a moment, and then she went over, she got the, uh, only with one arm, right, she has only use of one arm and one leg, she got the, um, the glass measuring cup down, she looked at the cup, looked at the paper, put the right amount of water in there, got a pan, put it in the pan, put the rice in, measured the rice, put the rice in. At first it got stuck in the thing and she had to get it out. But she put the water on, she read the directions, she waited for it to boil, she put the lid on, and she turned the heat off, and then she she went over later and took the lid off and she was so excited and she showed me this perfect fluffy rice and here it's been you know like she'll never be able to live on her own she'll always have no independence because she can't cook she can't talk she can't do but she can so what she needs then is sign language or some other way of communicating without having to recreate those neural pathways immediately. I mean, those will come as she works at it, 
But in the meantime, if she could do some sign language, you know, like, I love you, goes, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, so this was such a wonderful thing to discover. So if you have somebody that has had a stroke and is sort of locked in and you don't know what they know, but they can't communicate, try giving them a little test. And we did that with the coins, the money. Put money out. And I said, well, now show me which ones are quarters. And she put all the quarters in a pile. Well, show me which ones are nickels. And she did that. Which ones are dimes? And then I said, well, now um, give me 52 cents. And so she pulled two quarters over, and she thought that was it. And then I said, no way, that's 50. And so she looked at everything, and she put a nickel there. No, that's 55. And she looked. And so then um, I didn't, didn't get this right away, but when I asked her about $2.20, she put the $2 there and one dime, but she didn't. Know. So then I wrote it down, 2.20. Immediately she picked up the $2 and the two dimes. So her, she could see it. She knew what those were, but the hearing, from hearing to, to understanding and being able to interpret it wasn't as good as from seeing. So from seeing to the brain. Was, anyway, it was such an exciting day. So what a lot of discovery we did. And I just, you know, I just feel so grateful I was able to be there and watch this. Anyway, just thought I would share that with you.